I want to thank you for staying with me since uh, 10 this morning. And I want to thank those who have been sending me messages. But although there are few persons who have been sending me messages and commenting on what is happening, I still get the, the feeling that Jamaicans are fast asleep. Um, I noticed there are some persons who have started to demonstrate and to protest against certain things, and they've been doing so peacefully. But there are so many things that are not going right, and of course there are some things that are going right, and um, uh, I believe that if some things are going right, then the, the right thing, thing to do is to support it. So uh, we must be careful that we don't only tear down and fight down. We must also support those things that are good. But somebody need to tell me, I, like in the 60s and so on, Jamaicans were more aware and more involved. And even coming up, I mean, when we had gas prices going up and so on, persons got involved. When you had problems with terms, in terms of how the university and the um, university function, I remember the evening students and burn them guns, and you know, there's this whole thing that of persons need to be heard. But for some reason, even at the university level, um, they only wake up when <laughs> Minister Harris Chan got mentioned that students are involved in scamming. Now, I heard that the minister apologized. I'm trying to get him to come on the program, and if he can make it tomorrow. And what I've heard is that he said somewhere else that he has been misquoted. Well, I can tell you that when anybody speaks anywhere, and somebody has to report it, you are going to get what that person understand, what they gather, and then they tell you, which is not necessarily what the speaker intended. No, I'm not saying it happened in that case, but that can happen. And that is why I believe that when someone is reporting something, you should stay away from using words that you can have more than one meaning or such words will color what you're reporting. So say, for example, there is a fire in Spanish town and you're going to report that there's a fire. And you might say it in the report, there's a massive fire in Spanish town. One might ask, what is a massive fire? How did you come to the conclusion that it is a massive fire? Is it that because one building was owned by a big man, so it is a massive fire, but it was owned by John Brown, who nobody knows, it's not a massive fire. So, those of, who, of us who report, we have to be very careful. And sometimes it's, 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 sometimes it's best, I'm not saying they. The fire brigade men will not probably get too emotional in terms of their reports. But sometimes, sometimes it's best that you hear from them rather than you commentating. <coughs> you see, sometimes we write a story um, rather than giving the news. And when you have a story, sometimes to make the story interesting, you will embellish it. Yeah, when I'm doing my commentary on air, I, I do that too. They say, well, we're an idiot. You know, it's not really so. But when you're reporting news, we have to be very careful. Now, as I said to you, <clears throat> I'm not in the best position to assess what Minister Chang said. And I'm still hoping that I'll get him on here tomorrow. My concern is that people seem to have been putting the emphasis on Minister Chang, in terms of what he said, now probably what he said was stupid, didn't make sense. But what is important and we should look at is the fact that it has been reported not once or twice, many times, that students at the secondary level, some of them have dropped out of school, they're now into scamming. And it's now at the tertiary level. That is what we need to know. And if you have students at the tertiary level who are involved in scamming, we need to know 
what the institutions are doing to deal with the situation. Because it is one thing to have somebody graduate and don't pass, don't get the degree or the diploma. It's another thing for them to get, to graduate with distinction or first class honors. And, and not only get, they got first class honors, but they are first class teeth. And I'm more concerned about that. I would prefer sometimes to graduate with nothing. But when you graduate as a first class thief, that's something else. And the nation needs to look at that. Because the level of fraud that we have seen in the past few months, they're not being committed by one like a paparized brother who now no money, who thief because he needs to survive. The level of fraud which runs into millions, which our own star, um, and that have to be careful because I'm not too sure if the money was actually stolen or not invested properly. And if it was not invested properly, did those persons invest it without authority? Um, so, the four that we have had, and we have had quite a few, Separate, Sajikor, NCB, and some other places. It, and the persons who it is alleged that they, are, they have committed these offenses. They are not persons without any subjects. They are persons who have attended tertiary institutions. So, those past students, and let me let you know, <coughs> me not care, no. I went to a school and there was talk of fraud there, and there are persons trying to cover it up. No! One of the worst things to do when something is wrong is to cover it up. If you want to earn respect for the institution, you deal with it, let the nation know, and let the nation know what has been done. If you really want your institution to look good. And as I've said it already on the station, on in the church, what are the drawbacks and what are the challenges with the church? And uh, I probably can be specific. And I hope nobody can make up that and we shouldn't call the Catholic Church. Yes, I've been a part and a member of it. Is that you have some priests who have done some little strange things and we have sort of keep it quiet and probably just move them to another parish. That doesn't work. And as a matter of fact, if you subscribe to that position, oh, you shouldn't call you a name. You shouldn't call you tech name. You're only trying to protect your name. That doesn't help the process. And it's a form of corruption, by the way. It's like, for example, if you have fraud taking place at separate, and separate keep it quiet. Separate never thief the money. I work as them thief the money. Yeah, I understand. So, what's the big deal? I am looking at the leader today that says, Indicom Pickle. And uh, it seems to me that Indicom from day one, <coughs> a necessary organization. And we must remember what Indicom was born from. Now, why it came about. Our police officers were doing some things that they should not be doing. And there were some excesses which should not be. And then persons felt that the police force cannot or ought not to investigate itself. They can, you know, but you need another party. And that's my recollection of the need for Indicom. But I'm looking at the Gleaner here and I'm seeing Mr. Chuck, they are making a presentation. And if I should read it, it says, The passage of legislation to validate and indemnify the Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, from being dragged before the courts for prosecutorial actions carried out in good faith against a number of police officers was delayed yesterday after strong objection to the bill from some lawmakers. Member of Parliament for Clarendon, Southwestern, Lothan Cousins was the first to push back against the legislation, arguing that Indicom was on a frolic of its own, even though it was consistently cautioned that it did not have prosecutorial powers under the Independent Commission of Investigations Act. Now, I said man is a lawyer, keep referring to Indicom, but Indicom is just an organization on paper. 
there are people there who have to carry out certain acts. And we should probably not say in the come. It probably means, therefore, there should be laws guiding in the come. And if they breach those laws, they need to pay dearly for it too. And you know, let me continue. It says, um, as that's Mr. Lothar Cousins continue to say, I don't believe it is right for us coming here to validate and indemnify Indicom from his own callous actions. They were on a frolic of their own. We warned them about it several times over. We told them they needed to fiat, they needed a fiat from the DPP in order to prosecute. They did not listen to any of us, because I said in debating the bill yesterday. And that sounds like a power thing. Why should they listen to the DPP? Hope it has nothing to do with her sex. Um, it would seem to me, if I was in charge um, of Indicom, even if I have the authority, I would consult with the DPP, experienced persons there. Um, I would consult with them. But I tend to buy that point, you know, that um, they should be involved. And then he continues, the article continues to say, he said that he had indicated in open court and that would be Mr. Cousins, that Indicom did not have the powers of prosecution, but the police oversight body refused to relent and continued to charge police officers. I must admit, for an external body, I am a little bit uncomfortable, because I don't hear what other persons think, um, for an external body to be carrying out investigations, and at the same time, they are also prosecuted. It would be nice to have it separately done, you know, I love the separation of powers. And you know, this is the part that concerns me. Cousins said that officers spent significant sums for legal representation. And in some instances, police personnel were locked up for weeks or months and had been interdicted, interdicted with half pay. Now, somebody needs to tell me why that everything happens, we have to lock up people. Right? And a policeman is carrying out his duties. Why do we have to lock him up? Everybody, to me, you only lock up somebody who is a danger to the society. A policeman carrying out his job has done something wrong. Well, somebody say, my runway. Well, if you run me, that's a few in business. If you run me, good with dancing, go about in business. If he's guilty, then he run me. We won't have to feed and close him. Um, so I do have a concern about that one. So that is something that I definitely have a concern about. All right, um, it's now uh, 19 minutes past 12. I'm going to go for the break right now. You're listening to Rhythm FM, and this is a People's Program Spot Out. And remember, you know, that I want to hear what you think. Um, your comments are very important, and when you make comments, I do pass them on to the relevant persons. Sometimes I pass them on to ministers, MPs, and also the prime minister. So all you have to do is just send your voicemails to 876-816-5261. That is 876 876- 816-5261. Vernon Darby, your friend, thank you. Stay with us to come back. Don't move. You're tuned to Vernon Darby. Oh, love. Get ready be roller. Oh, love. Ready be roll. Ready be roll. Ready. Welcome back. You're listening to Rhythm FM coming to you live from Kingston, Jamaica. My name is Vernon Darby. This is the People's Program Spot On, where we are spot on broadcasting on the FM ballot 102.1, 102.3, 102.5, 102.7, and 102.9. And I've just got a message here from one of, I really have some top notch persons. You know, I, I call them my consultants who keep me abreast of what's happening. And this person says, Vernon, although the Jamaican radar is not working and will not work until August, I hope you know that Contana Mall radar and the Cuban government radar both overlap over Jamaica so you can look at those for reducing the surprise rainfall such as the one yesterday. Uh, thank you very much. I'm going to pass on that information to the meteorological office. They did speak to me and they said that um, they're getting a new radar system and um, that should be up, I think, by the end of August. Because right now, I think we're now in the hurricane season. Yeah, hurricane season is coming up. So guess what? We have to, we need the system working. But what this person is saying, although our system is not working, um, we have other systems 
which cover Jamaica. So we can get information from that system. And the person mentioned specifically the Contana Mall radar. And I must admit, I don't know where that radar system is, uh, but he mentioned, and the Cuban government radar both overlap over Jamaica. So um, we can know what is happening. I know they, ha they have some weather persons who have been giving information um, from other countries. I am hoping to get uh, some information from the meteorological office. You will notice that I'm doing something, well, I say relatively new. And so I've asked them to send me a message. But I think we had Mr. Evan there, Tom, so he's overseas at a conference there in Geneva. And I've asked him to give me some update because, you know, um, you know, public service is going to get information. I'd love them to update us as to what is happening because we really need to know. And the other good gentleman there who's trying to help us, um, he's at another meeting. And I think he has had time to send information to me so we can keep abreast of what is happening. So, um, it seems as if we can expect more rains. <laughs> I'm happy for that. A water commission, you know, can free up the little water, no? <laughs> oh, they're being conservative, you know, they don't want us to run out of water. Um, of course, we're on the program this week, but um, we're still in a drought period, and don't forget, if them catch you wasting water, you could be in big trouble, right? Big, big trouble, so be very careful. And the time is getting hot. Make sure that you drink enough water because you don't want to become dehydrated. All right? Okay, it's time for us to get into some music right now so you continue to stay with us. Yes, William FM having some wonderful time now. Your friend Vernon Darby. Yeah, man, touching base. That's uh, my African brother, may I tell you. I love it. Uh, right. Namadingo. Yeah, African, African, they're doing a lovely job with our reggae music. Well, I just got some information which I'm really happy about. There's a gentleman who I work with in media, Ruben Nunes. Yes, his son is heading for Oxford University. And if you know where they might come from, you see, boy, I'm a proud of them. So, Ruben Nunes. Congratulations to you, you, mommy, and your big boy. Proud, proud of him. Very proud of him. And um, so those youngsters out there, what they go to the hand midline to scamming, you have other ways of doing it. Because sometimes, as I said before, some of us were born fast. We live fast. Everything is fast. And we're dead fast. Sometimes we need to just take it, take it easy. Now, there's something I want to comment on today, my good friends. And as I keep saying, I'd love to get your feedback. And I, I'm not just a, somebody who do, do a talk show, but I'm always willing to help. And um, I, I don't think that people are reaching out to me the way they ought to reach out. And when they reach out to me, is that me personally reaching out to you? Know, I do have contacts and I have persons who are willing to assist. But sometimes when we have with trouble, sometimes I do the same thing to you. You have a look at trouble and keep it to yourself. Sometimes when you have your own trouble, Mark, you don't want to tell the world because when they tell the world the business, you see, <laughs> that's another trouble. But I'm talking about spousal abuse. That is something I've been talking about for years. I haven't come off that. Well, I have some topics I don't come off at all. And you don't for a second think that spousal abuse is a gender thing. A man thing. No man. The woman them abuse man. The man them abuse women. I don't know what is happening, but there seems to be a gender war going on. I, I, probably I'm overreacting. I don't know. And I know that there are various things that cause persons not to be able to get on, you know, not only in relationships, but in, in life. Sometimes we are from different areas. Sometimes I think that some of us have medical uh, mental challenges. As a matter of fact, I understand that that is the incidence of mental challenges in Jamaica is pretty high. But I'm going to make an appeal. It 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 burn me. Yeah man, it burn me when something happens. I hear people come out and say, Oh, 
A long time you say she go kill him. A long time you say he go kill her. And what the hell you do about it? Sit down. Them should have charged you too. And start to sounding harsh. But I'm tired of it. Let me tell you something. If you hear anybody just mention evening jest. Say them all commit suicide. Take it seriously. If you hear somebody. And you should be saying these things in jest. Them will go kill somebody. Make sure. You talk to, if you don't see you don't trust police, talk to a senior police officers. If you don't trust them, just send me a message. You'll be surprised that a little, invent, a little intervention can stop trouble. It don't make sense after life has been lost. You come talk about a long time abuser, a long time she abused him. And what that good for now? Me don't want to hear it. You're wasting time. You sat down all these years. You saw what was happening and you did nothing. And you got bald, shed tears. Crocodile tears. And let me tell you something. When someone abuses another person, it is not a personal matter, a police matter. So no wonder to, I know it can be very difficult for one to testify against their spouse. But sometimes it's out of fear. And let me tell you something. The law will look after you. Yes, you can be removed from the home and a couple of things can be done. And if you don't, if you get a restraining order, you won't behave yourself, you can be locked up. But I'm going to make a special appeal to every single one that if you are aware of persons who are having challenges in their relationship and challenges generally, to come and have a little argument and to go on for two, three, four days, go and report it. And I'm going to ask the police officers, when they get a report like that, don't wait. Go there, visit, talk with, and find out what is happening. Because it is better, as I say, prevention is better than cure. Right? Prevention definitely is better than cure. So, and what we need, what I want, I want us the system so set up. The digital system rather than the big book. So it's not just about making an official report, but make a little complaint. Two people are arguing. And so it might turn into something. You should be able to go report it. It's logged in the system and you can keep a record of it. So if anything happens, the police know where to start. Right? This, it don't make sense after the fact. Una ball. Eh? And I say, whoa, whoa, it don't make sense. We have to do what needs to be done. All right, coming here to the end of the program. Yeah.